Welcome back to this video 4 of Data Engineering Zoom Cam week 5 and in this video we will take a first look at PySpark and we will load some data with this and we will save this data with PySpark. So that's roughly the plan. We will see how to read a CSV file. We already saw this in the previous video, but we will take a larger file. We will talk a bit about partitions, what partitions are. Then we will see how to save this data to Parquet. We saw this already, but we didn't really talk about that. And then finally, we also saw this Spark Master UI. We will take a look at this. So that's roughly the plan. And I will again use a remote machine. So right now I am connected with SSH to this computer. So I have a terminal on this computer already. And by the way, the Jupyter notebook we created in the previous video, I put this into the code folder, which is in, uh, in the week five location. So this is where we will do all the stuff. And what I want to do now is uh, I want to execute this Python path thing that I probably should have added to, to PashRC this one. And now I want to start Jupyter Notebook here. So let me copy it to my browser. Yeah, for some reasons I'm not forwarding the port. So now, now I am. I don't know what happened with my configs. Yeah, now I'm forwarding the port. So I want to now create a new notebook. And I will name it as... Uh, yeah. And let me open this uh, as well. I want to copy some code from there. So I will copy the imports. So this Spark session, as uh, maybe I explained last time, so this is an object that we use for interacting with Spark. So this is what we use for reading things. This is our main entry point to Spark. And I also need to open another port, which is, I think, port 4040. And if I go to localhost 4040, then now because we started this local spark we have the master application ui now we haven't executed anything that's why we don't have anything here and what i want to do next is i want to go to ny taxi data website and i want to take data from january but instead of using yellow or green taxi records i want to use high volume for higher vehicle trip record. So I want to use high volume because Spark is supposed to process high volume data. Well, this is still not super large, but I'll use it. And I don't think we actually used this data in the previous videos, so that should be fun. Okay, I am downloading this now. Yeah, it's a quite a large file, it's 700 mix. I don't think it qualifies as a very large data set, but it is not small. We can see that there are quite a few records, almost 12 millions. So this is indeed not insignificant. So we load at that. And next I want to use this thing, the same thing as we did last time for reading the CSV file. So let's read this to Spark. So we specify the header here and now let's run show. Yeah, so it correctly gets the names of the columns. And if we go to our Spark cluster UI, let me refresh it, we see that there are new things there. This is for each time, each time we execute this. So let me execute it one more time. We will see now that there is another job. Every time we execute something, it is reflected here. Now I want to, instead of using show, I want to do head and then five. So it will return the first five records. And we can see that it is uh, reading these not as timestamps, but it reads this as uh, strings. So this one is also string, even though it's supposed to be a number. So Spark, unlike pandas, Spark doesn't try to infer the types for these fields. So that's why everything is string. And we can see this is if we do, I think there is a field called schema. It's not very well formatted, but we see that everything is string type. It just treats everything as string. And remember the trick we did in week one. So in week one, we used pandas to infer the types, and then we used these types to create a schema in our local data database. I want to do something similar here. Instead of using the entire data set, I will use, uh, and if you're doing this on Windows, by the way, so these are all Linux commands. So on Windows, they might not work, but probably you can use something like mingw or git bash for getting these commands as well on Windows. Anyways, so what head is doing is, uh, so this command head n101 
will keep only the first 101 rows and I want to save it to a file called head CSV and what it will give us so let's take a look at this head yeah it is the first 101 rows and we can check if we do uh, vc minus l it will show us that there is only 101 rows because i don't want to open to use pandas to open a 700 megabytes file i'm not sure how pandas will react to that so i will only maybe let's use 1000 so i will only use pandas to open a relatively small file so let me do this oops let me do this pandas read csv hit csv and i'll call it df pandas and now pandas is well it should be it's the types it should be doing a good job at identifying the types so pu location id pickup location id is integer drop off integer and these are strings yeah, this should be a timestamp, but again, Pandas is also not that smart to figure out that this is a timestamp. And we can use Spark to turn this data frame into a Spark data frame. So in Spark, in Spark session, there is a method called create data frame, which can take in a Pandas data frame and create a Spark data frame. So when we do this, this thing becomes a Spark data frame. So we can do show and then it will actually, you see, do something here. So this is a Pandas data frame. And in this pandas data frame, if we put, if we print schema, then we see that this drop off location ID is long, pick up location ID is long, so it attempts to do a bit of parsing. So what I want to do now is I don't want to use it as is, because I want to change a long to integer. Long is less memory efficient format, so integer takes four bytes and long takes eight bytes each value yeah i want to be a little bit more efficient here that's why i will use integer but let me just take this and i will post it to my visual studio code and then i will do a bit of formatting here so i want to make it not one large line but many smaller ones and i will remove this list thing we will probably need it so this struct type is something that comes from scala we need to turn this into python code we will use this for declaring a schema for our data frame so these things are all strings so we will put them in quotes and then here we need also to sort of invoke it use brackets and in python true to start with capital t as we discussed so pick up date time and drop off date time should be a timestamp and for timestamp the type should be timestamp i think then here we will use integer so this one i don't know what sr flag is for most of the records that i checked so if we look at our file we see that this sr flag for most of the records is empty so if i go down you see it's empty i don't really know what is there i don't think it is actually double pandas just for empty things it uses not a number that's why it makes it double but i'm not sure if it's double so what i'll do is i'll use string type instead and then this true means that it can be a null so it can be nullable and this sf flag is definitely nullable i'm not sure about the rest but i'll stick with that so this is the schema that we will use now for the spark data frame now let me i'll create a variable that i'll call schema and put this and then actually I need to import a bunch of things here. Schemas live in uh, PySpark SQL and they live in schemas or types. Yeah, types. But instead of importing all of them separately, what I want to do is I just want to import types uh, the entire, as the entire package. But it means that I will need to add types here in front of each name. So let me go to Visual Studio again for that. Uh, I will use uh, this multiple select again. So I'll need to do it here. Then I will also need to do it here and here. So let me copy it here. That schema doesn't work because this needs to be a list. Remember it was a list, I removed it. And Python lists look like that. So now this is a schema. And now when we read the CC file, we need to tell it for this CSV file, this must be the schema. Let me do that. So here I think I just need to say schema and then provide the schema. It seems to work. Let me print it. 
and then if I now do head 10 then we can see that date time is properly parsed location pick up location and drop off location are also numbers so they don't have quotes around this and yeah these two things are still strings and as a flag it's done for everything so this is how we define schema and now i want to take this data frame and try it to parquet because right now it's csv i want to save it as parquet file so here we have one huge csv file and actually having just one file is not good i want to show you to tell you a bit about internals of spark we will actually cover that in more details later imagine that this is our spark cluster and inside a spark cluster we have a bunch of executors these are computers that actually are doing computational work so they pull the files from our data lake and they do some computation and the way they work so let's say we have a bunch of files so this is our Google Cloud Storage, or can be some location somewhere. Right? And in this Google Cloud Storage, we have uh, some location, I don't know, bucket name, then folder, and then inside folder we have some structure, and then inside this folder we have a bunch of files. And now what happens, uh, let's say we have fewer executors, not that many, and we have more files than executors, and then each of these files will go to an executor. So this executor will get this file, this executor will get that file, and so on. So each of them will get a file, and they will do something with this file. And we see that two files are left. So when this executor is done with processing this file, it will go ahead and pick this one. Right? And when, for example, this one finishes, then it will take this file. Because this, this two will be already processed. Right? So the available executors will just go ahead and pick the next file. And imagine that instead of having eight files here, we will have only one. So if something like this happens, then only one executor can pick this file. It means that this executor will pick this file and these ones will be idle. So they will not be able to do anything. They will just sit and wait till this executor processes this file. So this is not good. And we want to have a bunch of smaller files instead of one large file. But what we have right now is one large CSV file. So we somehow want to break it into multiple files. And these things in Spark, they actually have a name. So they are called partitions. Instead of having one large partition, which only one executor can take, we want to have many partitions. So what if we take one large file and split it into, let's say, 24 partitions? For that, there is a special command in Spark called repartition, and the parameters of this repartition is number of partitions we want to have. So it can take a data frame with many partitions, and here a data frame would be all these files when we do Spark read and provide this location, it will create a data frame with as many partitions inside this data frame as there are files in that folder. So let us execute this command. And actually when we execute this df partition, if we go to our Spark master, we see that nothing was executed here. This command repartition is a lazy command. It doesn't trigger the repartitioning yet when we reassign this data frame now will be repartitioned but it will be repartitioned in the future right now it's still the same old data frame when we actually do something when let's say when we save the data frame only then this command will be applied so you see so here nothing is happening but now i want to say data frame uh, write parquet and then now i want to specify the location could be let's say for hire vehicles 2021-01 I don't think I need to specify anything else here. Now I just execute this and you see something is happening. I think actually, so here the way I did it, I see that there are six partitions already. So I was probably not right when I said it's only one partition. Apparently Spark splits the file somehow inside. So there are six partitions because we have eight cores. Currently eight executors are doing something. Right, we can actually see it here. So you see the job that we have right now is called Parquet and let me open it. And when I click on this, you see it showed us what it actually is doing. So there is this thing called exchange. This is where the partitioning is happening. And we can see that yeah, it's, it's doing something. There are some tasks. We have different executors and they are running these tasks. 
Okay, this will probably take some time because the repartitioning is a quite expensive operation. We will talk about that a bit later. While it's running, let me take a peek at the content of this directory, this one. So right now here we have only this temporary directory. You can also see what is inside. Um, yeah, right now nothing is there. So these executors are still processing things. So they're reading this data, they're repartitioning it. So they're turning six partitions into 24. We can actually see that four tasks are finished out of six. Two are still remaining. Well, one left to go. I think we can see that in this phase as well, in jobs. Yeah, so five out of six finished and one still is remaining. And now, yeah, we quickly saw that after the six operations, something else happened. So there was another stage. If I refresh right now, we see that this task completed. So I probably can go back to jobs. Yeah, so it took four minutes. There were two stages and the first stage had seven tasks. So one for each partition. And then the second stage, I think, had 24 tasks. This is when we saved the results. Now, if I look at this folder, I can see that there's a bunch of files. So this part, uh, number of the part, number of the partition, and then long name, and then snappy. This is a compression algorithm that is used in Parquet and then dot .parquet. So we see we have a bunch of files like that. Should be 24, like we asked, or well, 26 files because we have this success Think, right, and then it also prints this total, which we see also counts. And this success, this is an empty file, it's the size is zero, and it just indicates that job finished successfully. Unless there is file, we are not sure that these files are complete, not corrupted, and so on. But once the flag is there, we see okay, the job finished. So this is sort of like a commit message at the end of our Spark job. And if we want to try running it one more time, it will complain. So it will say, okay, something is already there in this location. We can see it. Yeah, it says the path already exists. I don't want to run this. If you have a problem like that, you can say mod overwrite, and then it will overwrite files there. I will not do it right now. I think this is all I wanted to show for this video. So in this video, we used PySpark for reading a CC file. So we also saw how to specify partitions. Uh, we talked a bit about partitions. So partition is roughly each file. So then we saw how to save data to Parquet for local experiments. And by the way, we can check that the size of this file is a lot smaller than the size of the original CSV file. But we saw that in the previous weeks as well, right? So the compression is like four times. And then we talked a bit about master UI this thing. This is a thing that we can use for monitoring the progress of our jobs. So that was a first look at uh, PySpark. We just read a file and then wrote the results to another file. So in the next video, I want to talk about Spark data frames. Spark data frames are these things that we have here, DF. They're similar to Pandas data frames, but not quite. So I want to spend some time talking about them in the next video. So see you soon.